The provider faces a $315,000 fine for failing to isolate residents and warn staff of the COVID-19 outbreak, and saliva-based antigen testing may be better than PCR nasal swab, researchers argue. This and more, next. You're watching LTC News with Dane Henning. Welcome to CNA TV Long-Term Care News. I'm Dane Henning. Today is Wednesday, September 16th, 2020. To stay in the know of Long-Term Care News, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. A Maryland provider may be forced to pay a $315,000 fine for immediate jeopardy violations after state health officials found that it did not properly isolate residents exposed to COVID-19. A report detailing the Sykesville, Maryland-based Brenton Woods Nursing and Rehabilitation Center's missteps during an outbreak at the facility was issued by the Maryland Department of Health's Office of Healthcare Quality in late August. Brenton can appeal the decision within 60 days from when it received the report. LifeBridge Health, which owns and operates Brenton Woods, stressed the care and safety of residents in a statement, but regulators found that in early June, the facility placed a resident who had been exposed to the disease in a shared room with a person who had tested negative instead of isolating them for 14 days as federal guidance dictates. The exposed resident, who later died, and their roommate tested positive for the disease in late June. Surveyors also found that several newly admitted residents whose COVID-19 status was unknown weren't isolated upon entry. The facility didn't provide PPE near room entrances of positive residents, and there were no signage on the rooms informing the staff members if that resident had the disease, according to the report. The facility had 11 residents die from COVID-19, while 38 others and six staff members tested positive for the disease during the outbreak, which lasted through mid-July. The $315,000 fine would come after the state fined another Maryland nursing home $70,000 in July for similar issues. Nursing home operators may have better luck issuing saliva-based rapid antigen testing for screening COVID-19 within their facilities over PRC nasal swab because of the tool's ability to judge how infectious people are, a pair of researchers suggested in a new blog published in Health Affairs. Investigators A. David Patiel, MBA, PhD, and Rochelle Walensky, MD, explained that while testing to diagnose COVID-19 helps identify a person with the disease, surveillance testing helps determine how infectious a person is who may have been exposed to the disease. They added that though rapid saliva-based antigen tests show a 30% false negative rate and does a poor job of diagnosing infection, it's likely the better tool for judging infectiousness. That's beneficial to people who live and work in close proximity to others, like in nursing homes. Patiel serves as the professor at the Yale School of Public Health, while Walensky is the chief of infectious diseases at Massachusetts General Hospital and medicine professor at the Harvard Medical School. Quote, the antigen test is ideally suited to yield positive results precisely when the infected individual is maximally infectious, they added. In contrast, PCR testing is, quote, far too prone to false positives when used as a test of infectiousness. Finally, for purposes of containing outbreaks, the problem is decidedly not false negatives associated with antigen testing, rather the problem is false positives associated with PCR testing. If your goal is to suss out infectiousness and prevent outbreaks, the antigen test is the tool you want to reach for first, the researchers wrote. This has been your long-term care news update. Everyone have a wonderful week and I'll see you on Wednesday.